Yeah. Hey Gearheads, today you will finally get to see some more of this Chevelle. Dan had to replace the cam and also took the engine out to freshen up the paint. So here's Chevelle Cam Swap. I hope you enjoy. Hey Dan, run that intro. Hey guys, thanks for watching. A couple things I wanted to mention. If you do like this video, please subscribe to it and ring the bell so you get notifications when future videos are uploaded. And also be sure to check out the older videos that I've already shot. I also wanted to mention a uh, thank you to Chris Green and Carlos Aguilar for donating music for this episode. You'll hear it in the time lapse section. So if you like that, check their uh, links out down below. And now here's Chevelle Cam Swap. All right, so this is where we're uh, picking up this episode. I already got the valve covers off. I uh, kind of diagnosed that the number three cylinder exhaust is not opening, uh, the valve is not opening. So we either have a lifter that is no longer with us or a camshaft load that is no longer with us. So we're going to go ahead and pull the uh, carburetor and the manifold and determine who the winner is. Now I'll give you a hint here, you only need to drain as much uh, out of the radiator to get below the manifold level. You can leave about half of your antifreeze in because you don't need to drain it out. How do you know when you're about halfway? I don't know. Good way not to lose the hose clamps. Loosen them up. Back them up and then just tighten them up a little, just snug enough so they're not going to roll around on you. And try not to take things completely off if you don't need to. If you could just disconnect one side, then you'd be a lot better off for reassembly. You know how water corrodes? Use lock jaws on the end of your hoses to very gently just nudge them kind of back and forth and uh, separate them so you can pull them off. You just want to be careful not to mar them too much. All right, now this is where the right tool for the right job comes in. Get a distributor wrench, makes your life nice and easy. It gets in there exactly where it needs to be. Then you can loosen it up and you can pull that distributor right out. All right, I did fail to mention, I did get it to uh, number one cylinder and made sure the uh, number one spark plug was where it needs to be on the distributor cap and now we're just going to loosen up all of these bolts with whatever uh, wrenches and attachments we need to do and then we will go ahead and pull this manifold off and I'll show you the time lapse of it because it'll be a lot more interesting and cooler looking than watching me do this and uh, probably put some cool music to it also. As you're finishing up getting these last couple bolts out, before you do break the manifold loose from the gaskets, you want to try and clean up between the cylinder head and the manifold up in this area here just to clean it off with a rag, make sure whatever's loose up there is not just going to go down into the valley. Just in case uh, you're doing a simple fix and you're putting it back together. I have a feeling I may be doing a cam, so we're going to be cleaning the whole thing out. Unless it's just a lifter, but we'll see. I just cut out a little bit, which you probably saw on the uh, time lapse, but what I did is just took a small screwdriver, 
and uh, hammered it in here with the mallet just to get a little bit of lift and then kind of went back and forth with the, uh, the screwdriver and a pry bar and of course you know you just want to pry that up gently so you don't destroy anything and then we'll go ahead and pull the manifold off and uh, see what we're looking at All right, so we got the manifold off and we're gonna take a look in here for the first time and see what it looks like. And it definitely looks like the lifter is sunk down in there. What I'll probably have to do is spin it around and see what that uh, cam lobe looks like and then we'll know. All right, so I got the lifter out. I got a straight edge cross it and a screwdriver down in the center. And as you can see, it is definitely cupped. So this lifter is definitely shot. I'm going to have to check the cam and see what the cam looks like. But uh, the lifter is no longer with us. Flat tap it? I think not. All right, so we're going to drain the oil and see what it looks like. So I drain the antifreeze and I'm going to pull the radiator out, but first I'm going to detach the shroud, lay it back against the engine, then the radiator will come straight out and the shroud will come after that. And you guys can see my assistant Ashley, she's the one who hey, owns that C10 truck that we work on. Yeah. Did you ever pay me for that anyway? No, not really. Yeah, well if you don't pay me for it I might sell it and buy some I'm cooler. I'm going to take the bolts out and then I'm going to change mine to the smaller piece and I'll show you guys how I do that. What are you, the host now? Yeah. I thought this was my show. It's not. Make sure you keep a hand on that and it doesn't fall into the, uh, all the drip pans that we have down mm -hmm. there for training fluid and radiator fluid. Okay. Good job. That's another tip. Make sure you don't drop any bolts and uh, they end up in the liquid below. Yeah, unless you want liquid bolts. Now, I don't know, can they see me from here, Dad? Yep. Now, to take this off, all you have to do is press the button and pull. And I'll just pull, put this in there. And I'll switch this out. And then you don't really have to push the button, but you just put it. And you can if you want because it's, like, easier. But, you know, then I'm doing the inside one. Here's another tip for you. If you can, put the bolts back in the holes they came out of. If they're not going to be in the way, that way you won't have to look for it later. Okay, now here's a tip for you. If you like specialty tools, which I love, I got this uh, flywheel slash flex plate turner. And uh, what this does is allows you to grip the teeth and rotate to where you need to be so you can get all those bolts out. I used to do it with a pry bar or a screwdriver. It was very dangerous and you'll get hurt. So this is an inexpensive tool. You can probably get one at Harbor Freight, which is one of my favorite stores, and it makes your job a lot easier. All right, here's another tip for you. I'm doing the exhaust. We have the three bolts here. What I did is I loosened the easiest bolt to get to almost all the way, but left it on a little bit. I got the other one off. So when I pull this one off, instead of the exhaust falling down on me like the first one did, which is how this tip was created, you just go ahead and get to the easiest one. And then that way the exhaust won't fall on you.
right, so I got the engine out of the car. I got it on a stand, but I'm keeping the crane on it to keep tension on it to support it. I'm uh, going to take everything on the outside apart, and then when I take out the valve train, I'm going to keep it organized by using that. So there's expensive plastic trays you could buy to keep your valve train organized when you pull it out, or you could just take some paper towels, mark them out with the numbers of the cylinder, keep them in order, put them back the way they came out, and there you go. You need to remove your balancer and put it back on instead of buying an expensive tool. Just go down to your local uh, auto parts store. A lot of them have these rentable kits. You basically put it on a credit card. When you return it, you get all your money back so it's free to borrow. It's got all the different screws you need, a uh, puller, and also an installer to help you get it back on. When it comes time to scrape off your gaskets, you put some paper towels inside the holes and that'll keep the gasket material from getting inside everything. All right, now here's what we're doing. Um, we got the crank dot at 12 o'clock. We got the cam dot at six o'clock. We're gonna pull the cam out, put the new one in so we can line the dots back up. Then once we button everything up, we'll go ahead and rotate the engine to top dead center, number one cylinder, and we'll be able to go ahead and drop our distributor in. All right, so I know it's been a while since I've talked. I've uh, probably shown you a lot of high-speed things that I've done, painting the engine, uh, getting it out and everything like that. So uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit. So I got the cam out, got everything cleaned up, got the new cam in, and I'm putting everything back together. I'm about to put the engine back in the car and uh, we'll shoot a little bit more as that goes along. But I figure you don't really wanna see me talking, you wanna see work. So uh, that's why I shoot a lot of the other stuff and show that to you. Make sure you're using the right gaskets in the right places. Um, 
these uh, that go on the ends actually have little um, little pieces sticking out, which I didn't even know there was holes here until I used a drill bit just to clean them up. And uh, that definitely helps these sit in where they belong. And you just gotta put a little bit of silicone on the ends to help them stay down until you get the manifold in and torqued. Sit in just like that. And then you can do a little dabbing of silicone or adhesive just to hold the gasket into where it needs to be. Just a couple of dots here and there. This is not sealing anything, it's just holding them in place while you drop the manifold on. You definitely want to make sure that your manifold uh, does not move the gaskets and they stay where they are supposed to be. Depending on the adhesive you're using, you may want to let it set up before you put these on and make sure that they stay where you put them. And when you put this down, you want to be nice and gentle, make sure nothing slips and the gaskets stay where you put them. And then I did find out when you look at your, um, your bolts, some things, there are different types. And this one you can see has a little taller head on it than this one. There's more of these than these, so I'm assuming these are going to go in the four center holes. And it gives you a little more meat to get a wrench on to tighten them because you can't really get a uh, socket in here too easily because of the angle, even if you didn't have a, a carburetor on it. You always want to start bolts by your hand. Uh, Start threading them in by hand. You don't want to use a wrench or a ratchet or a socket or definitely not air because you want to make sure that the threads are going in correctly and you're not cross-threading. Something with a lot of power could cross-thread very quickly and easily and you'll have a lot more problems. So fingers are a good way to start. This wobble is a great tool to help you get into uh, different areas. Um, it's also good to take it off the ratchet and kind of start it by hand. That way, again, you can make sure that you're not cross-threading anything. I think after I torque this, I'm just gonna put the valve covers on and protect the uh, internals, and I'm gonna drop it in the car, and we'll go ahead and get the transmission and everything hooked up, and then uh, we'll move on from there. So, I know this looks quick to you, but it's not very often I get time to spend in the garage, so I'm hoping today is the day that I'll get the engine back in the car. Um, not really going to document it or talk too much. I'm just going to do the fast motion speed so it looks like I do it really quickly. But it does take a lot of time just hooking stuff up. Just do a couple more shots of that. And then uh, hopefully soon you'll be seeing it uh, getting started. First thing we're going to do is jack it up. Get the engine stand off. Alright, so I've been doing a little bit more work and not filming it, but here's where I'm at. 
Uh, got most of the engine buttoned up, got the radiator in, hoses and everything like that. And uh, coming up to putting the fan in, and I didn't want to damage the radiator fin, so came up with a little tip. Put a piece of cardboard in between your shroud and your radiator, that way when you put your fan in, it won't do any damage. And then when it's in, you just pull this up out of the way. Okay, so one of the problems I ran into is, I think it's hard to see on camera, but this pulley is not really lined up with the uh, crankshaft. So I went online and I found some brackets to put this on because I actually found out the brackets on here are incorrect. So this is the bracket that I had on here. I'm not even sure if this is right for my car. Uh, as you guys know, I got a 66 Chevelle 396 big block. I do have a long water pump on it, but uh, I think this is a later style, like 74 to 76 bracket. So let me show you the new brackets I got. So here's what I got. It's a bill of aluminum bracket kit. So we got two brackets for the bottom and then uh, one for the top. And then it has all the hardware and everything you need for it. I'll show you the instructions and the information in a minute. This is the alternator bracket kit I got to match it. It's from ICT. And we're going to see how it all goes on and see what it looks like when I'm done. It does come with instructions for the power steering pump. You have to remove the stud out of the back and you put it, uh, a bolt in with the spacer and then the front and basically have the two brackets with spacers and some bolts there. And then you got the upper bracket, which is the adjustable one. So it shows you how it goes on. So I'm going to do it and we'll see how it looks. And we have this. Of course, now my belt's a little loose because of the way the power steering pump is located, but the brackets look pretty good and everything fit together well. So uh, off to the auto parts store to get a new belt and uh, gonna move on to the alternator. Okay, so here's a before shot of my alternator bracket. Just the standard bracket. Um, of course, I blasted it and painted it a while ago, so it's looking kind of ratty. Some guys probably have those big chrome uh, brackets on the top, which look pretty cool. So this one is actually going to use a turnbuckle on the top and a that billet bracket I showed you before with the engraving on the bottom, which unfortunately is going to be kind of hard to see, but um, it should clean up this top and open it up a whole lot more. So we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. So here's the lower bracket for the alternator. Uh, obviously no comparison on how cool the new one looks, especially with the engraving. But unfortunately, it's going to be really low in the front of the car and with the shroud and being under the alternator, it's kind of hard to see. I don't think I'll be able to get a picture of it, but you can tell that when people look at your car to show or to cruise, it's going to look way cooler. Same thing with the upper bracket. This turnbuckle is going to replace the entire upper bracket. Uh, it's going to fit in just like this. And then, of course, you can uh, adjust this as needed for the um, pulley. So I ran into my first problem. This is the bolt they supplied. For the head, this is what I have in there. So at some point, um, these may have been stripped out on my heads and somebody tapped it to a bigger size. That's just because they're original heads from 66. So I'm going to have to get a bolt that's the same size as the one that we need, but with just a little bit bigger thread. Again, not a problem with the kit, just something with my engine. That's the uh, reason we're car customizers. So here's how the top looks uh, when everything is finished. You just have this little turnbuckle instead of the whole bracket covering up this whole area. So it opens up everything, makes it look a little better. And uh, of course the billet items make it look a whole lot better. So here's an odd angle looking straight down at the front of the engine. You can see we've got the turnbuckle over here in the alternator, the brackets over there on the power steering pump. Everything looks real good. You can see a little bit of the bracket, uh, lower bracket on the alternator. So very happy with it. And uh, I think you guys will be too if you end up getting this kit. Now I'm using 50-50 mix and there's a reason I'm using this instead of the full strength and mixing it with water. Uh, because I have an aluminum radiator, I was told the 50-50 mix is pure distilled water. And if you want to go out and buy the distilled water and mix it with the full strength, that's fine. But I figured I'm better off just doing this from the get-go. That way I know my aluminum radiator is going to stay clean.
Hey guys, so we're here at my buddy CJ's shop, Broken Knuckle Customs. We're gonna retune the Chevelle and get it running good. So what are we doing, CJ? Playing around, timing, carburetor, get this beast running like a beast. Do some burnouts? Yes, sir. Always. <laughs> you dropped into it. You see down there? No. some gas in it and rock and roll. What are we putting? Racing gas in here? 110. Wait a second. What do we got? 110 octane. 110. Uh-oh. You want to film the pretty color? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wake this compression up. Tell you what, I said it's expensive too. Every time I played with it, I tore it all up. Alright, we'll put it back together and see where it's at. Oh, put this on the right way. So, we uh, basically took care of the timing and we fixed up the carburetor a little bit. Got the accelerator working, so I have full range of the carburetor. And I think we're good to go to do some burnouts. So I think we're in really good shape. The car is running awesome. There's a couple more things I need to do, like put new spark plugs in and probably get some real good gas and put some octane booster in it. But CJ is the man. I thank you very much. So and, uh, we're, we've done some burnouts and I think we're done with this video. You can leave comments below, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when new videos are uploaded. So thanks for watching, and until next time, stay positive and keep on wrenching. Go ahead. Are you alright? Are you doing non-time laps on yeah, this one? Yeah, but you can't see you anyway, so don't worry about it. Can you only see my hands? Point it upwards. Hello, this is me. Okay, hang on, blooper reel. You know, then I'm doing the inside one. Right here. Got it. Dad, it's like stuff. Dad, it's stuff. Just make sure.
sure to take it back out before you put the part in. Obviously. Now you don't have a bunch of bolts left over when you're done. Which you always do, so... No. Um, gonna take the drivetrain out? No. These gaskets the same? Does anyone know? They are not the same. Sometimes things like that, you just gotta figure it out. Or make it up. Maybe I should script this. This is full of mouse poop, so let's... This is the alternator kit I got to match it. It's got the engraving. Hey, we're gonna go put gas in the car. You're gonna come help or film. Stop eating Cheetos. So sorry.